Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Family Matters Co-Creating Better Management for Gestational Diabetes Research Update. Uh, this is for World Diabetes Day. This is the presentation that was given as part of World Diabetes Day at the Alberta Diabetes Institute. And uh, I am Jamie Boisvenu. I am Dr. Rose Young's research assistant and also doing my Master of Science in Epidemiology. And uh, Dr. Rose Young is not able to be here with me. Uh, she had presented this earlier uh, alongside, and uh, we ran into some, some issues with the live stream. I apologize. The Wi-Fi in the room was just not capable of supporting uh, the presentation. And so I apologize to anybody who uh, attended online and wasn't able to view it. But we are bringing this to you now, and uh, hopefully you find uh, this presentation valuable. I do want to acknowledge that this research and this presentation was completed on Treaty 6 territory, and we want to acknowledge Indigenous populations, uh, especially today, given that um, they have some of the highest rates of diabetes in the world. So our project, gestational, our project on gestational diabetes education uh, looks at how do we co-create uh, better management for women with gestational diabetes and their families. And when it comes to family, we also want to acknowledge that um, today is World Diabetes Day, as I mentioned, uh, but that diabetes concerns every family. And the theme this year for, for World Diabetes Day is diabetes and the family. And I want to acknowledge that one in two people with diabetes actually remain undiagnosed. And so I think it's important to spot the warning signs. If you'd like to know more about World Diabetes Day, you can go to worlddiabetesday.org slash discover or find them on Twitter at hashtag uh, WDD2018. And in keeping with the family theme of World Diabetes Day, uh, we want to bring to you our research work on gestational diabetes. So the rates of diabetes in pregnant women in Canada is continually on the rise. Uh, if we look back on the CIHR or the CIHI uh, discharge abstract database, we can find out that over the last decade, Per thousand deliveries, we're looking at about 54.5 GDM cases, and that is continually rising. This, this data goes back to 2004, and now that it is 2018, I would assume that there is more data available on this as well, and the rates have continued to rise, uh, though that, that information has not yet been released. Um, when it comes to gestational diabetes in Alberta, the rates are about the same. It's about 5.5%. And when we think about that, we have to think about how do we actually provide practical self-management, uh, particularly in the area of gestational diabetes education to all of the women with GDM. And so that, that really brought us to doing our research project. And so what we did was we engaged diabetes educators, so nurses and uh, registered dietitians, CDEs, other allied healthcare professionals, endocrinologists, and we brought them together in a research participatory community with women with GDM. And what we did was we actually co-created education resources. So we took a, a look at the GDM landscape as it is now and we identified where the chasm or where the gaps might exist within GDM education. And what we done, what, what we had done with that was we, we created some resources as research outputs and we reevaluated that. And our goal now, and the reason why you're watching this presentation, is to bring that back to you. So the knowledge transfer process of showing you what we've done, what we intend to keep doing, and how we have a goal of building and continually building capacity across the zone. And our ultimate goal is to improve self-care behaviors for women with GDM and to promote overall family health. But not only that, we also want to strengthen the GDM networks across the zone and uh, build a community within Edmonton around uh, GDM care. So our preliminary findings from the initial phase of this GDM research study, which many of you have participated in, showed um, 
some pretty inf interesting information. What we had done was we went out into all of the GDM clinics and we observed what was happening. And we also surveyed women who attended the class who had GDM. And what we found was that we had about a 60% res uh, survey response rate, which is actually pretty good in the realm of surveys. We had 280 women respond to the survey out of a total of 480 during a four month period. And uh, what we found that women, what we found that uh, women predominantly fall within the category of 25 to 34 years of age, 68% of our population. And that those who speak non-English or English as a second language represented about 35% of the population. So we're, we're dealing with a very ethnically diverse population of women. And, um, of that, about 85% uh, of all of the women who completed the survey found uh, indicated that it was their first GDM pregnancy. Uh, so uh, pretty interesting uh, just characteristics of our population. We also asked women about questions on awareness around GDM. And what we found was that, you know, women feel... Uh, aware uh, that GDM is caused by high blood glucose, that it can impact the future health of the baby, uh, that they are comfortable re reading nutrition facts food labels, 89% comfortable um, uh, understanding how to plan healthy meals, 96%. And so what this tells us is that the classes are actually doing a pretty good job when it comes to giving women the information and making them feel aware about GDM. And these survey responses are coming immediately after the class. We did see a little bit of variation in women's perception of blood glucose testing, and that's across the site. So we stratified by clinic. So we broke it down across uh, the five clinics that participated. And we felt that, you know, there is a little bit of variation when it comes to looking at checking blood glucose four times daily. Some indicated less, some indicated more, as well as feeling comfortable checking blood glucose. There's a little bit of difference across clinics there. And so we asked women if they would like to see additional topics of information. And the most indicated topic of information that they would like to see is on meal planning and nutrition, but also around exercise and GDM. Uh, it's interesting to see that those were the top two. And so women indicated that they would like that additional information predominantly in the form of a website. So our key findings from, from this initial phase of the project was that classes are not centrally administered. There is variation in knowledge across the sites and that women want additional information on lifestyle management and impact uh, and how that impacts their family. And so 70% of women indicated that they wanted that material online. And it's interesting. So that leads us into the next phase of our project. So what we had decided to do was to create a consortium or a working group of women and their providers who were in the GDM space. And using a deliberative priority setting process, uh, we wanted to bring about shared decision making around what that might look like. So we developed a working group that looked at exploring GDM education and care experiences for women and clinicians. We identify GDM top priorities through a deliberative priority setting process. And uh, of those priorities, we identified a top one that we would address and create an actionable team plan with. And this is um, this has to do with co-creating change. We really wanted to include participants as partners in the research design process. And so we really had to trust in the process in, in making that happen. And so... The methods that we had used, as I mentioned, we used the deliberative priority setting process method. Uh, we used a nominal group technique. So that is where those identified top priorities were actually selected, unbiased, um, and anonymously voted on. And so women had a, a choice in what they wanted to focus on. And depending on what the indications were, uh, we had selected the top priorities based on that technique. And through uh, a series of iterative working sessions, we had five working sessions. We did content and thematic analysis on the transcripts to pull out key dialogue. And so 
what we had done with that dialogue was we used it in a technique we like to call iterative dialogic priming. And so what we had done was we took out that key dialogue and we used it at the start of each subsequent session. And we also conducted post-session surveys for continual quality improvement to ensure that what we were doing was actually uh, what people wanted to be doing. And so through the CIHR uh, deliberative priority setting process, uh, basically what that does is it, um, you generate ideas, you record those ideas, you clarify and rank them, and then you have a private voting to prior prioritize which priorities are important. You identify that top priority and then you develop an actionable plan. So the results from that, we had a series of iterative working sessions, five of them in total, in which we had six clinicians, and these included registered nurses, LPNs, uh, registered dietitians, dietitians, certified diabetes educators, endocrinologists, and other stakeholders within the research community. And we also had patients as well, and these were women with gestational diabetes and their partners. So we had about five to six people attending each session in person and approximately three to four online. And in the first session, we identified those key issues. So we actually came up with 19 issues, obviously not something that we can even tackle all at once. Um, but one of the interesting things was that women felt supported by their environment, that they identified that there's some barriers and facilitators in facing frontline providers and women with GDM and that they're um, are some solutions to these priorities that we identified. And I just want to point out here that there are some key, I just, I can't go through the whole list, but uh, things that we identified, like what do blood sugar numbers really mean? How do I interpret them in the context of activity and food? Basic physiology of GDM is not well understood. There might be some language barriers. I felt alone after class and coming back for one-on-one -on -one appointments. There's no knowledge of what is being done at other sites. So obviously we want to address all of these things. And it was a real struggle for us to kind of identify the top priority. I'll get to that in a moment. By the beginning of the second session, we started to use that dialogic priming that I had mentioned. So we pulled key dialogue. We, we figured out kind of the theme that the group was going towards. We pulled key dialogue out of that. And this is the result. So we have, you know, clinicians saying throughout the system, she would hear that she failed her glucose test. I don't have a lot of knowledge of what's being done at other sites. Uh, patients would say, I'm, I was overwhelmed. Think it was one of those, oh, it won't happen to me kind of things. Or I'm eating well, but my numbers are still high. Why is that? What am I missing? And so this really helped to kind of engage and begin the discussion in the second session. And from that, we were able to identify uh, some driving forces and restraining forces. Some of the driving forces are that, you know, there's inconsistent messaging across the sites. Uh, best practices are being used. Moms are wanting to be healthier. We wanted healthier babies. Those might some good, be some good driving forces. Some restraining forces are that people might not be comfortable with change. There's resistance to it. It might take time for these things to happen. There's a lack of resources and a lack of awareness around what is really going on. And then you'll notice on both sides that there is cost. So cost is a driving force in that what we are doing could potentially save a lot of money in confusion, miscommunication, uh, etc. But there's also restraining forces in that, you know, um, it costs money to do this stuff. And we have funding to do this and, and we're paying uh, to, to do this research study. And hopefully it will have a positive impact on health. So by the end of working session two, we recognize that, you know, waiting time could be an opportunity for learning. There's information there, but it's not readily being absorbed and that there might be some resources that would address several of the identified issues uh, that is needed. So things like a booklet or perhaps capturing the patient narrative or looking at the built environment. We also identified some system and individual level priorities within GDM education. Some of the system level priorities, the top one addressing lack of basic resources and support for women, that there's inconsistency of information across providers and sites, 
that there's little feedback to clinicians on class effectiveness. Language used in the class, she would hear that she failed her glucose test. Some of the individual level priorities for women uh, and their and, and providers uh, look at things like being more culturally sensitive, physical activity and advice, confusion on macronutrients and meal planning, future impacts of GDM and information sharing with families are some of the other priorities. So you can see the forces that we're up against. You can see the, um, the constraints on the system and uh, some of the things that people truly want to be uh, addressing within our project. And so from that, we pulled out a new theme. We moved into the third session using that dialogic priming once again. We found, you know, patients would say it all comes down to what the physical resource is going to look like, or I'd rather read a book than skip between handouts. We also found clinicians saying, you know, our patients really don't have a lot of time to absorb things. A narrative told in the context of life makes way more sense than telling women general principles. So now we're getting around to what people really want and what matters to people. And this is, we're see, what, what's happening here is we're seeing the process starting to work. And so we're starting to pull out those human narratives and being able to capture those in a way that is meaningful to people. We actually hosted by the end um, in working session three, we hosted the multicultural health brokers. We gained a cultural pers perspective on having them there. Uh, they really brought the perspective of women's needs from ethnic minorities within Northern Alberta. And the classes actually provided adequate resources for needing uh, uh, resources that were needed for GDM and that women really want something that they can use outside of the class because the class really actually does quite a good job at delivering the information that is necessary. That comes down to the common den denominator across the sites, and that is Dr. Ryan, Dr. Dr. Eddie Ryan's diabetes-pregnancy.ca website. And this is a website that he developed on his own volition on a sabbatical because he recognized the gap. He recognized that women need something outside of the class that will ease the tension and reassure them that they can manage their own gestational diabetes just fine. And so from the, by the fourth session, we, we were able to pull out the dialogue that, you know, if we made a book that was only English, I think that would be a barrier for me. Um, you can see people are starting to think about tangible assets that could be used within the GDM space. A day in the life could really help to tie things all together. Let's innovate and provide it in a way that's constructive. Once we make a tool, how do we actually get it out there? Now things are really starting to roll along. And so by the fourth session, we found that let's review the site. And so we reviewed the site and what we found was the site is overwhelming. Content's a little bit overloading. There's some plain language issues there, navigation problems. Uh, we also need to capture the voice of women with GDM and their healthcare providers. And so that led us to doing a formal analysis of the diabetes-pregnancy.ca website. And what we found was that overall, overall the score is, is okay, 6.4 out of 10. Um, the website is accessible on mobile and for disabled users. But when it comes to the experience, people are generally not that satisfied in that the site is not well marketed. Uh, so it's not easy to find. It's not coming up on search engines. And that maybe that there needs to be some more built-in technology into the site uh, that is user-friendly. And the key points from that analysis we found was that websites... Uh, the website uses analytics to monitor visitor behavior. Great. Awesome thing, right? We found that, though, that the website is not optimized for printing, uh, that there's no external pages that actually link to the site, so that makes it hard to find, and that it's not W3C compliant, World Wide Web compliancy. And that really has to deal with search engine optimization and how people come to the site and how people navigate the site. So that led us to co-creating a new diabetes-pregnancy.ca website. 
in this part of this research study, we actually only focused on the gestational diabetes section of the site. And you'll notice that uh, we have, what can I do? Can I exercise? What do I eat? Why me? Why now? What about baby? We posed and designed the primers on the site around the personal narrative so that women, when women go to the site and they think about, you know, they're navigating through the site and they're thinking, why does this have to happen to me? Why am I here? Like, I can't believe I'm reading this stuff. They look and they see, oh my gosh, I was just thinking that. Why me? Why now? And so when they navigate to that, they get, you know, initial messages or GDM causes and risk factors um, and messaging around the importance of managing GDM and that they can actually do it. It's something that they can accomplish. It's not as bad as you think. Your healthcare team is there to help you. And this was really an initial framework. We adapted a lot of what was existing on the diabetes-pregnancy.ca website. Uh, for instance, the FAQ was awesome. The FAQ on the existing site was actual questions from women with GDM, common questions that Dr. Ryan and other endocrinologists get and on a daily basis in clinic. So that led us to deciding that we were going to rebuild the diabetes-pregnancy.ca website focusing on the identified top, top priorities. And I want to point out that we're not just focusing on one priority. This site allows us to focus on almost all of those priorities, almost all of them. It's pretty amazing. So then we came to uh, developing this set uh, It can be really scary when your first diagnosed with gestational diabetes. There's a lot to think about, and it can feel very overwhelming. But thankfully, there is an amazing team and class to help you with everything you need to manage your gestational diabetes. Our interdisciplinary team will be there to support and guide you through your whole pregnancy with diabetes. We will give you advice on how to keep your blood sugars under control. We're here to help you monitor your progress, so please don't hesitate to ask us any questions. So throughout the site, there's a series of videos such as this. Very light, fluffy. Our videographer, Sean, was fantastic in creating these. Thank you, Fallout Media. And um, this allowed us to sort of break the ice. Uh, so women go to their class or they go to their appointment. They do the sugary drink. Then they get a phone call at home, maybe when their husband's at work. And they find out they, that, that they've just been diagnosed with gestational diabetes. Oh my God, what do I do? And they're home alone, or they're at the grocery store, or out with some friends, having a lunch that probably would or might raise the blood sugar levels. And they think to themselves, I failed. I'm a failure. I haven't even had my child yet, and I already feel like a failure. This site is designed to reassure women. It's designed to be a complementary piece to the care that is received in diabetes clinics and education classes. It's not meant to be a, a, a supplement or a placement for medical advice or health professional advice, but more so to comfort women and say, hey, you know, it's not that bad. You're going to get through it. It's going to be okay. And, you know, let's take a look through the site, read through, and then maybe you could formulate some questions that you could bring to your GDM education class. And so when they get that phone call from the nurse or the dietitian that says, you know, you have gestational diabetes, we're booking you into an education class. By the way, go to diabetes-pregnancy.ca and check it out. There's some really good information there that will sort of tie you over and reassure you until it comes time to come to the class. So let's hear from Gisette, one of our participants from the research project. When I first started testing my blood sugar, I was worried that it would take a lot of time and disrupt my daily routine. I was stressed that I could no longer eat the foods I was craving, and trying to change my lifestyle was overwhelming. I was already dealing with another pregnancy complication, and I was scared about what would happen to my baby if I didn't get my sugar under control. The worst part was when I would do everything by the book, and I would still wake up with high sugars. That was the worst way to start my day. But the class helped me a lot. I found ways to make glucose testing less stressful. After the class, almost all my readings were within normal range. 
I stopped worrying about every number and I started focusing more on the big picture to make both my baby and me healthy and happy. My husband also helped me a lot. We started cooking and eating together to support each other. Pretty soon, I learned what habits and foods would affect my numbers and I started to feel more in control of my body. So throughout the site, there are a series of videos like this. And um, we really tried to adapt a multimodal way of, of receiving information. Excuse me. So women will be able to view videos. They will be able to read different content throughout the site and also access external resources to the site as well. So we have designed a new site. Um, there are some improved features to the new site. It is now W3C compliant, which means that we have validated and tested it for cross-browser compatibility. So it works across different web browsers, uh, mobile devices, etc. Each page is developed using search ops, uh, engine optimization best practices. So when you type in, you know, why do I have gestational diabetes? You get the diabetes-pregnancy.ca website. There is also metadata within each page that is written in the natural search language and that we've also built in tools to allow a preview of what pages will look like within a search en engine result. And so this is what the site looks like. Uh, it's very easy to navigate drop down menus. As you see, there's, uh, we posed questions. When you navigate to a page, you can watch uh, a little video. These are also all available on YouTube. Um, and so it's a, um, Hopefully it will be a good resource. You also notice that there's a type one and type two diabetes. Uh, this is coming. Uh, it's a work in progress. We actually just migrated the current content from the existing diabetes dash pregnancy website into this one. And so it's all the same content. Um, and we also have a resources uh, page and a blog page and also a section for providers, uh, which while I will get to when I show you the website in just a moment. We also have a participate in research button. And so when you click that, it was just below the, the three GDM type one and type two. You'll see it in a moment here, um, right here, participate in research. And so women can click on that. And when you scroll down, you know, you can pick different um, research studies that you'd like to participate in. And this actually brings you to the uh, Alberta Diabetes Institute research homepage. We also have built in, in the bottom right, you'll see a feedback button. And when you click that in, when you click on that, it brings you to a survey and that allows you to provide feedback on the website itself. If there's something that you don't like or that you do like, please tell us, send us, a, a, submit a, a survey response. Uh, let us know who you are and tell us a little bit about what you liked and disliked about the site. And uh, because, you know, this is a quality improvement project and we are continually improving. Uh, the project does not end here. We are still making changes to the site itself. And so um, our next steps are to evaluate the uptake and acceptability and utility of the website across the zones. We want to consider further development of the website as a more interactive form of education and quality improvement. And we also want to build in a research component to the site. Ir not just the participate in research button, but perhaps something that ties into the pregnancy cohort uh, or existing GDM research specific to this project uh, that will bring it to the next phase. And so we're looking for people who might be interested in giving us feedback on the site. Uh, if you're interested, you just go to diabetes-pregnancy.ca and uh, go to that feedback form and le uh, leave us some feedback. If you're interested in participating in the next phase of this project, you're welcome to uh, do so. You can contact me. Uh, just my email and my phone number is there below. Um, and I also want to acknowledge uh, Dr. Pat McCall, who has submitted a very awesome Exploring Reasons for Childhood Obesity uh, video that is uh, entered into a competition that ends at the end of November through the IHDCYH talks. And so I encourage you to search Exploring Reasons for Childhood Obesity and voting on her video uh, just through YouTube. Uh, you can do that. We want to acknowledge 
uh, everybody who participated in this research study, particularly the patient partners and healthcare providers within Edmonton and Red Deer, uh, Alberta Health Services and Covenant Health, who uh, have provided the uh, support and expertise in carrying out this project. I, we specifically want to acknowledge Dr. Eddie Ryan for his work on the existing site and uh, allowing us to to carry his work further in in this site and, and making it a resource uh, for women across Edmonton. And we also want to acknowledge Dr. Patton Call, who has uh, brought a lot of expertise to this project, as well as our students, uh, Sarah Ganem and Zosha who uh, were participated in this project uh, over the course of a few summers. We also want to acknowledge the videos that were completed and, and published to the site by Fallout Media, Sean C., our videographer, thank you. Uh, also, Carrie Oliva, our web developer, who actually made the site possible. Uh, we want to acknowledge you as well. We also want to recognize that this is World Diabetes Day, uh, and... Um, this work was supported by the Alberta Diabetes Institute and the University of Alberta, and uh, the funding for this research is provided through AstraZeneca. And so now I'm going to, I want to take you to the web page. Uh, if you go to your web browser and you type in diabetes-pregnancy.ca, uh, pregnancy.ca, it brings you to our site. This is great. Isn't this great? Um, this is the site. And as I mentioned, uh, you get to a homepage. It shows you GDM type 1, type 2. And if you click on GDM, it'll take you to the first landing page that is what is gestational diabetes. And there's a little video here which you had seen. And then it breaks it down into those questions. Why me? Why now? How do I test my blood sugar? Will I need medication? Can I exercise? And if you click on those, it takes you to, you know, the web page, Will I Need Insulin? And it provides a little bit more information on taking insulin, reassurance around it. And across the top, there's also a really nifty menu bar that breaks it down by those subjects. There's FAQ as well. If women have concerns, does insulin harm my baby? Diabetes can cause complications to eyes and kidneys. Will I get them? Am I more likely to have a stillbirth? Those kinds of things. One of the most important parts of the site is that we recognize that we can't um, do everything. And so we really want to acknowledge the other wheels that are turning. And that brings us to the resource page. And this allows women to access additional resources like Am I New to Edmonton? It will link them to all of these things, including Multicultural Health Brokers Cooperative. Am I New to Canada? Some federally funded resources, Intercultural Child and Family Center. But also some more sensitive topics like uh, My Partner is Abusive. I'm Feeling Really Down. It will provide you some mental health resources. I'm Scared to Be a Parent. Some, some resources on becoming uh, the Alberta Perinatal Health Program. But also, you know, I don't have access to daycare or I even, I don't know how to breastfeed. It'll bring you to a resource that will show you all the different resources about breastfeeding in Edmonton. These are, th these are really great things and we want to drive people to this part of the site. There's also a blog. So if you want to know a little bit more in-depth stuff about uh, gestational diabetes, oh, page is not loading there. Um, oh, I guess we'll have to come back to that after. Uh, the four providers tab, which most of you are probably most interested in, um, this will have some PDFs. These are these are not HS or Covenant Health uh, documents, but these are the existing documents that were on the website that were created by Dr. Eddie Ryan and may be helpful to some providers. Um, there's also, um, when you go to the about page, it tells you a little bit about the information about the site, but also some additional resources on Canadian Diabetes Association, Alberta Diabetes Foundation, uh, ADI and IED PSG criteria, those kinds of things. So that's the site in a nutshell. Um, if you would like to live, leave us some feedback, please do so by going to uh, let me just move this over um, by going to the feedback page 
down in the bottom right there, and it'll bring you to this nifty uh, survey. So if you click on women with diabetes, you can indicate, you know, I'm a woman with gestational diabetes. Overall, did you find this site helpful in managing your pregnancy somewhat? Um, and what did you find you like best? This actually, this form might have already changed from the time that you're seeing it now uh, because we're continually improving and pushing new updates. So if you would like to leave us some feedback on the site, this is how you may do that. Um, if you'd like to participate in the next phase of the project, you can do so by contacting me. But uh, once again, I do, I do apologize uh, to those who were unable to see the live stream today, but I hope that you enjoyed this presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. You have my email and, and my contact information. And once again, uh, thank you for watching.